What's up YouTube? It's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. I'm a big fan of Visual Studio Code, so in this video I want to tell you five different ways that you can speed up your development using Visual Studio Code. All right, so the first in the list of five ways to speed up your development is knowing the shortcuts and taking advantage of shortcuts. So things as simple as moving from start to end of a line by holding down command on a Mac or holding down the option key to move word by word or holding down shift and option to highlight different things or copy and paste shortcuts or cut with command X and then paste with command Y, holding down alt to move lines up and down holding down alt and shift to duplicate lines like this, command Z to undo. All these different things are fairly standard uh, working with text shortcuts that you guys can use. Uh, and I've got a, an entire video on awesome shortcuts that you have to know with Visual Studio Code. So you guys should definitely check that one out for more details than what we're talking about now. But in addition to just working with text, there are shortcuts that are specific to VS Code itself. Things like uh, Command or Control B to toggle open the side window on the left. Uh, the Control tilde to toggle open the terminal when you need that. If you've got a markdown file, Command K and then V will open up a markdown preview. And what you're looking at here, just, just for your reference, is a series that I called Core Fundamentals of Web Development. 15 parts that go through and help you build a link saver application from scratch. You guys should check that one out as well. So in general, you want to take advantage of all the different shortcuts that Visual Studio Code has to offer because shortcuts in general, whether it's VS Code or any other application, is going to help improve the, the speed at which you can do things and the efficiency with which you can do things. So if you guys are looking for a, a pretty thorough reference on all of the key bindings that are available for Visual Studio Code, you can check out the uh, code.visualstudio.com slash docs slash get, a, slash get started slash key bindings and down here they have a full list of shortcuts for your operating system so you can go and click on that and then bring up an entire list of the shortcuts that you have available. Now you also for shortcuts can come into your settings and look at keyboard shortcuts and find a list there as well. So some of them have shortcuts already assigned, some of them don't if you scroll down far enough. There's a ton of things that are available that don't actually have a shortcut assigned that you can assign shortcuts to as well. All right, so number two out of my five ways to improve your development speed in Visual Studio Code is to optimize your layout. So this is actually a couple of the shortcuts that I just mentioned, like Command B and Command Tilde to toggle open and close certain, certain windows is super, super useful so that you can get rid of things when you don't need them and have a lot more space for your actual development. So now I've got a lot more space on this screen for my development. Now one of the things that you can do also is you can go to view, you can go to view appearance and move sidebar right. And this is something that people really recommend so that when you toggle open this window, you're not actually moving your code. So before when I toggled open that window, it shifted my code open or sh shifted my code over. Now when I do this, it uh, this window pops open, but my code stays to the, to the same side and doesn't move, which actually improves your, your development experience. Now there's also something that takes this a little step further that's called Zen Mode where you can do Command K or, or Control K and then Z and you'll go into basically a no frills look at your code so you've got nothing to distract you. Just all of your sweet code right here, quick and easy to use and quick and easy to develop with. All right, there's lots of other settings that you can look at inside of Visual Studio Code as well. You can do things like moving your, uh, using split terminal so you can have multiple terminals open at the bottom. You can also have split files at the top, so you can move one file to the right. You can even take this as far as doing a grid here, and, and that way you can set up multiple files in different dimensions so that you can look at more than one at one time as well. So again, lots of different things that you can do in VS Code to take advantage of optimizing your layout for your development experience, and that's just gonna be up to you to kind of dig a little deeper to figure out what really works best. And that's a nice segue to our third way to improve your speed as a developer with Visual Studio Code, and it's customization, and it's customization of everything. It's customization of the layout and, and what you think looks best and works best for you, 
whether or not this looks best over on the right or the left for you, that's part of customization to see what works best. Now there's lots of other things that you can customize as well, like uh, in, the, in the keyboard shortcuts. I mentioned that you can see a list of all these shortcuts, but you can also override the default shortcut. So if there's something that you wanna change because you think differently than how it's pre-programmed, you can do that and you can customize that shortcut for yourself. So if I look in the key bindings JSON file, I've got a couple of things that I've added here. And let's see, one of these. I think saved as was by default set at command shift S and I, I switched that to be save all. So instead of save as, for me, command shift S just made more sense for save all. Then there's also uh, command H. I did to, uh, I switched to be a find and replace. So if I do command H, it shows up up here. And I did that because command shift H does the same thing but for the entire project instead of one file. So this way it was easy for, for me to remember command and H and then just add shift if I wanna search through the entire workspace. Also added some custom things down here to my terminal. So if I do a command N while I've got focus on the terminal, I can open up a new window just like I would up here. So open up a new file. I can also command W to close one. So notice I went from two to one. And if I open up three or four of them, I can also control tab through them the same way I would through files up here. So these are just uh, key command and when, a context of when these things should take place that I set to really customize VS Code to the way I think about how I do saves, how I interact with the terminal and add new files. Uh, what else do I have here? A couple, of, uh, a couple of things that I've got from extensions and that leads me into part of this conversation as well is extensions. So in the extensions portion of this sidebar over here, I've got tons of different extensions that add lots of great uh, functionality to Visual Studio Code for me like debugger for Chrome, for debugging in Chrome. There's different th themes to give yourself a look and feel that you might like. GitHub pull requests is a new extension to support pull requests from GitHub in Visual Studio Code directly, which I have a video on that you guys can check out as well. There's a live server extension that uh, lets you build or lets you start up a live reloading server using this extension. I've got a video on that that you guys can check out as well. So there's tons of different extensions to do almost anything that you can think of. If you don't find an extension that make that you're looking for, you can also customize this and build your own. So there's tons of different ways that you can customize VS Code, including lastly, just customizing your settings. So you can change thing like, things like font size, your font family, so your tab size, lots of different things you can change on here to customize again, just to make sure that this works as good as possible for you, the developer. So let's get into part four here, and this is another part of customization, but I think is important enough to break out into its own category, and this is snippets. So inside of a, let me uh, remove everything, inside of an HTML file, you've got access to something called Emmet, which is just built in snippets and short codes for HTML. So if I do the bang character and an enter, it's gonna give me an HTML5 boilerplate. I can do things like, uh, say I want a div with a class of container that has an H1 inside and press tab and it auto generates all this code. So this is built into Visual Studio Code Emmet for HTML and CSS can save you an incredible amount of time. I've got a video on that that you guys can look into to learn more of the specifics. But if you really learn how to use the syntax that Emmet provides, you can greatly speed up your HTML and CSS as you write it and become more efficient again as usual. So along with Emmet, you have the ability, let me go back to what I had here before and just save that. So you also have the ability to write your own snippet. So if I come over to my settings icon here, I can look at user snippets. You can have snippets per a specific language. So they get saved in a JavaScript file, javascript.json here that you guys uh, can see some of the snippets that I've got. I've got, a, uh, actually I don't have as many in here. I think I got rid of some. But you can see a couple of these. Uh, for, for loop for an array has a prefix of 4R and then it goes and generates all this code for me. So if I come to a JavaScript file and I do a 4R and press enter, it's gonna go ahead and generate all this code for me and I can replace index with I, oops, and then uh, whatever my array is that I'm working with, go ahead and do that as well. 
And then when I get finished, now I've got an entire for loop and I don't have to generate that stuff myself. So you can get infinitely creative with snippets and you should, the things that you write over and over again, go ahead and write snippets for them so that you don't have to write out that boilerplate stuff all the time. Now, in addition to doing that yourself, you can also find, as you might've guessed it, extensions for snippets. So if I just search snippets in here, they're probably gonna be snippets for your favorite language, JavaScript ES6, Angular 7, React code snippets, ES7, React Redux, uh, GraphQL. This is one that I use a lot. They've also got them for Vue and HTML and Bootstrap and Node and Express, all these different things. You can find extensions that will go ahead and add these snippets for you, again, to save you time and energy. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about is automatic, automatic formatting of your code. So uh, going back to extensions again, notice you can add a lot of functionality to Visual Studio Code with extensions. There are extensions like Prettier, which will format your code automatically. You can set it up to format your code on save. There are things like ESLint that will format and lint your code, meaning that it will go through and give you kind of errors before they get to the browser. So it'll find things in your code that are errors that you wouldn't have known about until you got to a browser and ran it. It'll tell you about it beforehand. Uh, very similar to that is TSLint, which does the same thing, but for TypeScript. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript that is strongly typed, hence the word TypeScript. And with TSLint, it'll go through and do the same kind of linting and also give you the same kind of formatting as well. So let me give you guys an example of what this looks like. One is I've got my settings to make sure that I end things with a semicolon. So when I save this, it's gonna automatically give me that semicolon back. Now I've also got settings in here to use double quotes. If I change this to single and save, this is gonna go ahead and automatically format that back to uh, double quotes. If I start doing some weird stuff in here and save, notice that as I added those returns, it goes ahead and puts it back where it should be. If I were to kind of mess with these things or put them all on the same line and save, it's gonna go ahead and automatically format those objects as well. So just so you guys know, these are a couple of the authors and courses that have been really influential for me as a web developer over the past couple of years. So I follow Wes Boss, who's got lots of different courses, Traversy Media on YouTube and Udemy, and then Colt Steele for his beginner web developer uh, boot camp and advanced web developer boot camp. Lots of great stuff out there that you guys should check out them as well. So with this automatic formatting in general, I don't have to worry about things like semicolons. I don't have to worry about formatting my objects. I don't have to worry about any kind of formatting after you set up your rules and install extensions and get everything set up. Everything is good to go. You're ready to go and you can use it right there. So that was five different ways that you can drastically improve your speed and efficiency in Visual Studio Code. I also want to let you guys know that my Learn Visual Studio Code course which teaches you everything you need to know about Visual Studio Code. I just recently moved over to Udemy, so I was hosting it uh, through Gumroad and doing that on its own site. Now I've got it through Udemy, which is a great platform that I use personally a lot. I take lots of courses on Udemy, and Learn Visual Studio Code is right there. It's ready for you to guys to go and use it, and it goes through all the different things that we talked about in this video in, in huge detail. Customization, the user interface, writing and formatting code, the integrated terminal working with Git, debugging. There's all different kinds of great content in here that you guys definitely wanna check out if you enjoyed this video. So go out, download Visual Studio Code, learn the ins and outs, learn the shortcuts, learn how to optimize things for you and become a better, more efficient and faster web developer. I hope this video helps and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my newsletter on learnbuildteach.com to get updates on the latest content as it comes out. Thanks for watching.